live. Boom. What's up? Let's see if I can get this working. Um, what's happening today? Let's see. I'm doing this unannounced mostly because I don't know how long it's going to last. I've got some friends in town and we're supposed to get dinner in a little bit. I don't even know what that means, but uh, I thought I'd at least try to make today a little bit productive by um, just noodling around with uh, some corrections, color ideas. I don't know, just kind of want to play with something. So last night I did uh, or started a, a sort of an oil painting sketch. And so I just took a picture of it and color corrected it to make it as close as possible to the real oil sketch. And I'm just going to kind of paint on top of it. Um, I've got some ideas of some things I want to try with oil paint and I want to um, be a little bit more sure with my colors before I go and put a bunch of paint on the canvas only to not be totally happy. Uh, one example of that would be this background right now. I'm not, I really don't want it to be that color. Um, and I also wanted to get a better look at this to see what I could correct in terms of proportions, measurements, and things like that. I was really struggling with shaping the nose last night, so I just kind of left a general value indicating the nose. Uh, yeah, I've never painted on top of a painting before um, in Photoshop. I think uh, this might be fun. Um, anyway, I might be flipping back and forth a little bit to see to see the comments in YouTube because uh, the computer that I normally use to glance at with the comment stream is not, um, it's not working right now. It's in the middle of some updates. Good, chat's working. Let's take this thing off, default view. So yeah, I'll, um, I'll be flipping back and forth a little bit here. Sorry, I'm just kind of getting totally set up. Uh, I'm not really ready for this at all. So there's there's a thing. Um, anyway, chat's active. No one's here, right? Probably. Yeah, so I'm just going to paint. And I might talk about some stuff. First thing I want to do, just because it was bugging the hell out of me when I opened this up, I want to fix this nose. This is a sketchy reference, by the way. Um, I could not, for some reason, get the shape of this nose right in the actual painting. I was just having a lot of trouble whenever I would put any medium down. I was just having a lot of trouble uh, with my brushes, basically. that's I, I don't feel like I've got adequate brushes for um, for painting this small. This painting is only about 8 by 10 inches. So uh, I just kind of, like I said, blocked in like the squinty-eyed value of what something like this might look like uh, or what this should probably look like. And now I want to kind of shape the nose a little bit better to get it more in line with the actual reference. And I might cut into it a little bit here and there. Um, I'm still not happy with it. Let's do, hey, guess what we have? We have, we have Photoshop, so let's do some flippy doos. Flippy doos. And yeah, I'm totally aware that the forehead's really messed up now. It's funny, I didn't see that at all last night. Um, I just couldn't tell that there was anything wrong here. These colors are actually a little desaturated compared to what the actual painting looks like it's the real painting's got a pretty high pretty high chroma this forehead's a lot bigger than that <clears throat> that looks messed up this looks messed up let's get in here and fix this because this is messed up yeah i think when i when i originally sort of did just like a, a value wash uh, to get some color on the canvas I did a like a light pink, like you can see it kind of here, and I actually like the background 
um, when it was that color. And I like these little bits and pieces that are kind of popping out. Um, hey, Baron. Uh, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Uh, I was just saying that I was, uh, I, I don't have my other computer right now, so I'm just going to be flipping back and forth between chat. Um, and do my best to, if you have any questions or anything, I'll do my best to flip over and answer, but bear with me and be patient, because uh, I don't know if I'll be able to answer. So I'm just doing a paint over here for anyone that does join, and um, don't want that cool. And I'm just trying to, right now, kind of correct the form. Um, I wasn't too dissatisfied like with the current state of the values, I would say. Um, let's go a little redder. This is gonna get pretty soft, I think. Yeah, not not. I wasn't too mad about the overall values um, when I did this. It was a pretty quick sketch though. I mean I didn't I didn't really spend a lot of time like measuring. I just kinda wanted to get in there and paint last night. So it is rough. It is very much eyeballed, I would say that. I didn't I just kinda did like a five minute uh, line block in. Okay, so I've got some um, shape of that nose is better. It's working better, I think. Uh, let's go a little cool. I, I did notice this morning um, there, are some, there are some pieces like this is too bright, but uh, we, can, we can fix that pretty easily just by darkening it. I did want to focus on like making sure I had like a cool shadow and like a, a warm light source, so I'll kind of keep that. I need to bring these highlights up a lot. Um, I was just kind of getting a base layer, layer in, so uh, what else do I need to do here? Um, some of this stuff is a little, a little too bright. Um, a lot of dudes have beards now, I noticed. Uh, and I'm not a really big fan of doing beards, but it's, it's pretty interesting to like have to, to sort out, I guess, what, um, you know, what the general values are while try to keep keep like a local color uh, assigned, I guess, to the beard. Um, that was something I was struggling with a little bit last night, but I think it's I think it's working okay. It's getting these values right. I think that's that's the hardest part. Like this beard is just too dark right now up in this area. Um, my hair was fun to do, just kind of flipping my brush around and hoping for the best. I think I need something with more texture. Ugh. I'm having this, okay, so you're going to see me do this a couple times. I'm having this problem with Photoshop. I just did a reinstall, <clears throat> a fresh install of uh, Mac OS X Mavericks, and it seems to be working okay. The computer overall seems a little bit faster. Um, that makes me happy because it was definitely chugging here and there. It's a pretty old computer. Uh, but now I'm starting to notice one bug in Photoshop CC. I switched from CC 2014 to CC uh, when I wanted to use this uh, colorist color wheel because it the this one has a lot of features that the one that works for 2014 doesn't have. And uh, it was working fine in the last version of OS X. Like this whole, everything was working just fine. And um, now what's happening is occasionally for no good reason, usually when I change tools, uh, but not for any other particular reason, uh, my, all my hotkeys stop working. And if you've watched one of my streams, you'll know that I'm, rarely ever clicking on anything. I'm just kind of, you know, using hotkeys to to make some tool switches and whatever else, but 
uh, yeah, everything kind of stops. Literally every, there it goes. It just now, I can't like, I can't undo, I can't do anything, I can't change my brush. So I have to switch over to this and then come back and then all of a sudden everything works. I have no idea, there's like no rhyme or reason for why that's happening. I, it happens even when I'm not streaming. So that's a fun thing. There it goes again. So if you see me kind of like clicking off and clicking on, that's that's the dilemma. Yeah. This whole area is messed up. It's so weird because there's like a highlight here coming off from the sun and it's getting cast onto his cheek, which makes sense, but uh, it's obviously way too bright in my, my rendition of it. So I gotta figure out how to make that work. Is working. Left is good. No, I paused it. <clears throat> it for me, it bugs when I press Control. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what what that is. I never had this problem. I never had this problem at work in Photoshop uh, CC twenty fourteen only have it or I've only encountered it here and we've got I've got the same operating system in both places so yeah I don't I don't know what's going on with it and a quick quick look at uh, support forums and stuff obviously yielded nothing um, as they usually do what is this what's happening this is a really hard area to paint a lot of a lot of transitioning happening. Mouth is too light. So yeah, I'm just trying to go through right now and get some of these values um, better aligned with what they should be. I feel like my pressure sensitivity is crap now too. Everything broke when I upgraded. What is this color that I'm using? There we go. Yeah, the only problem I think I'm gonna have overall is that this is gonna get pretty fuzzy that's just because of um, because of my tools. Like I'm gonna lose a lot of texture, and I didn't bring over all my brushes, so we'll figure out how to make that work for us too. Uh, let's see. I don't like this. Yeah, a lot of ambient light happening. Okay, my friends are texting me. Bear with me for a second.
Okay, sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> I have some friends in town, and we're going to meet up to go to dinner. So I don't know how long this stream is going to be, but they're going to they're going to catch their breath a little bit, and we'll figure something out. Okay, what? Ah, shortcut keys. Come on, guys. Okay. Uh, we got some core shadow issues up in here. Need to restate a lot of this stuff. This is a funny spot. What is this? What color is this supposed to be? It's just like a completely neutral gray. All right. And Okay, what do I want to do here? I can mess with the eye. It needs to get fixed. Um, I feel like it needs to be pushed. It just needs to be elongated. Um, oh, let's see, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? I think I want to fix the neck. I think that would probably be good because this um, hard to see for me here is just like how different the value is. So about middle gray. The face is darker. Okay. Yeah, it's about the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's too dark. Okay. I think I know what to do. I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. If I can get my computer to respond. I'm really gonna try not to mess this up too much. This is gonna be this is a hard area, I feel like, because there's a color shift and I've got a lot of blue happening. <clears throat> And um, there's a lot of reflected light coming from the ambience in the scene. Uh, and this, the way that this form turns, really what should happen here, if, if this is, um, you know, a color, some color, whatever it is, if it's like a pinkish hue or whatever, what should actually happen is it should get more saturated right before right before the uh what do you call this uh the core of the shadow um and that'll hopefully help 
turn that form a little bit better. But I also need it to kind of bleed in so that it's not so sharp. Yeah, I definitely I need to bring these values up so that I'm not messing around with color that doesn't matter. Don't like the way this shadows cast. Hmm. Hmm. This is too dark. That cast shadow looks very strange from the ear. And I think it's just because it's such a uniform like band of shape, which is totally unnatural. Plus, it's uh, the light, the highlight here is obviously not nearly the right value. And so the cast shadow doesn't look right. And then there's also no ambient sort of warm reflection coming up. Um, or warm ambient light. Oh, man, this is bugging me. I need to, maybe I'll just deal with the less capable color plugin and focus on using a version of Photoshop that isn't going to give me problems and make me frustrated. Uh, let's see, I need to get darker here. Nope. Okay. This area is really muddy for me. I don't really like it. His face is definitely, or his head's definitely squat, um, which is fine. I'm fine with that. I'm not going to bug out over that. Uh, feels a little more stylized or whatever. I feel like you can get away with stuff like that as long as it's all still proportioned correctly. Um, Yeah, I actually kind of want to personally want to start introducing a little bit more uh, subtle exaggeration, almost almost caricature esque kind of uh, treatment of features. Um, you know, the stuff that just makes a particular aspect of the subject interesting. Like, I really like the dude's brow. Uh, if you can get it to sit correctly and not make him look like a Cro-Magnon man. Um, but it's, I think it's the important part is that it goes back at the right angle. So this is one, one reason why I wanted to, like, I don't feel like this background is working. I mean, I know it's not working, but one thing that's bugging me is that it's uh, where the ed these edges here meet, there's just and it's okay that there's not enough contrast, but there's something about like the values are sort of close um, and it's warm against cool in a way that doesn't seem like it would be natural. Because if, if you know, this is actually the background, this should be a lot cooler and it's cadmium red. So that means that it's really warm. Uh, anyway, I'm just looking at his nose in 
my preview in the upper right, and I just feel like I need to take it down a notch. I think the shape of this is wrong. Hmm. Yeah, I, I want to, in the paint over, the real paint over, when I finish, when I try to finish this sketch of a painting on the actual canvas, I want to try to um, get really loose, a little bit more destructive, I think, with some of these shapes in general. Uh, I'm not, just to I want to just kind of communicate enough. And I felt like I was doing okay for a while, and then it just started getting frustrating with the nose part and me not succeeding with it. So I want to kind of do that. I want to rework the background. So I'm going to try a background out here in a second that's going to take. Um, A background that's gonna lighten everything up. I'm gonna try pink and then I'm gonna try uh, some other colors and just see what hopefully works. I don't really know yet what's gonna work. But I like the idea of taking a picture of a painting. What's going on with his ear? What is happening here? Uh, taking a picture of a painting that's in progress and then doing tests digitally and then trying out different ideas you might have so that you can be a little bit more sure about what's going to work or what's not going to work when you actually go back to the canvas. I don't want to mess around too much here. There's a lot of value problems happening. A lot. Trying to see these weird shapes in the ear that will always be super weird. And another weird thing coming down here, okay. A lot of weird things. A lot of weird things. This needs to be a little bit more red. needs to be a little bit lighter. Hmm. I normally don't want to mess around too much with the details like this at this time, but I just want to get this ear generally feeling believable. A little forms to turn in here. I am starving. I just realized that. I know you guys care, uh, but I'm really hungry. Thanks, Baron, for uh, joining. Uh, appreciate that. Mm. Yeah, I didn't announce this because, like I said, I don't know if I really didn't have any ambitions or goals with this particular stream other than try out some ideas, um, try painting over a painting, see if you know that could yield anything fruitful. Um, but mostly I was just trying to kill some time while I waited for my friends to get done with their trip to see some other friends. So um, I got done with all my chores like a good boy and 
deserved a painting break, I felt. And I didn't want to go and paint for real because uh, I didn't want to deal with the cleanup right before having to go out. Painting's really hard, oil painting. I just, I recently moved into a new apartment in the same building that I'm in, but uh, or that I was in prior to moving, but I, uh, I had to downsize a little bit because my rent got bumped up quite a bit. And uh, in doing so, I lost my painting studio. So everything was kind of packed up for a while until I set everything up to be a uh, usable space for art. And uh, so it's all set up and everything. And I, you know, I got kind of caught up in the digital stuff. I think, I think digital is a really fun sort of medium to work with. And I just, I was starting to see some personal, you know, progress in terms of getting better with the tool set and feeling more comfortable with, uh, you know, using Photoshop and stuff. And I uh, just got stuck in it for a little while and I forgot how to paint. So now I'm going back and I'm relearning how to paint again. And it is not easy. Uh, not that I really knew how to paint, I wouldn't say. But I, when I was doing it more often, it was definitely a lot better, more efficient uh, at it. And now I'm not. So it's really frustrating and hard. And the medium does not behave at all like, uh, like digital, obviously. It's a totally different beast entirely. Um, and it's got some amazing things that can happen in it just with brush strokes and whatnot that you really can't totally emulate digitally. Uh, and I really love it. I really do like painting, painting, painting. I just wish I was, oh God, I've got so much work ahead of me though. It's like, it's so, so much to learn and not only just to learn, but also like internalize and um, techniques to get better at and you know, so much of it comes from just practicing. Um, I feel like these sorts of exercises with digital help me with some fundamentals of like understanding color and light and light quality and stuff like that. Like this is what we started with and this is where we're at now. So we're getting a lot, obviously a lot better. Like I look at this now and I'm like, geez, this is you know, I mean, it's got some character to it for sure. Um, and those character, those qualities you can probably only get with oil paints, like some of the brush strokes and stuff, which I like, but you know, as far as just getting overall correctness in a believable form that you can then kind of mess up and turn into something a little bit more expressive, I gotta get a lot better at that on when I'm, especially when I'm just doing like a la prima, whatever. Uh, I'm out of, oh god, I went to a life drawing session and it was awful. Um, I went to the life drawing session on Thursday and it made me realize just how uh, out of practice I am when it comes to drawing and doing anything from observation, direct observation. And it's a really crucial skill to have to be able to do something from direct observation. It's a very different sort of skill than this, say. I mean, they're both drawing and measuring and all that kind of stuff, but there is something about the timed nature of it. There's something about um, just uh, the immediacy of the, the subject matter and the model and all that kind of good stuff. And it, start, it made me realize, like I've been thinking about this a lot just because I, I used to be pretty okay with life drawing sessions. It's definitely something you gotta practice, but um, this is all a little too pink for me. Uh, I used to be okay with it and good, you know, I mean, I could have a fruitful, fruitful sort of productive session, but um, that skill, I don't even know what I was talking about. Anyway, that skill goes away really quickly and it's frustrating and I need to practice it more because it is another aspect of seeing and observing and both, you know, 
that will help anything I do um, when I'm working from a photograph or when I'm working from other reference of any other sort that's static. Uh, I don't, it's, it's like always going to be beneficial to have that. So I need to get back into the habit and so I'm going to start, I'm starting, going to start to go to uh, life drawing sessions every Thursday and eventually forming into weekends based on the place that I started going to. Uh, and then um, another thing I realize I want to start doing because of that is I need to start, I need to try painting from observation, which is not something I've done yet. And so I don't really have models just hanging out at my place, although that would be pretty amazing just to have like a closet full of people. And you say, hey, Bob, I need you to come out. We're going to we're going to do a session now, and I want you to pose like this. And he comes out. He's probably wearing chains. I'm not saying I kidnapped him. I think he just like likes wearing chains. Um, and we go and have a session and drink tea. I don't really like tea, but Bob likes tea. Uh, but it would be great to have you know models at the ready. Or even just, I, I, I would say I've got willing friends. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I don't have friends that are willing to pose for me. But you know, everyone's got their schedules, and that's a thing that's you know pretty. It's a pretty big ask for somebody. Hey, come over to my place. Uh, I'll make you some food. You can have some wine, but I need you to sit still, with no expression on your face for multiple hours. Thanks. Uh, it's a it's kind of a weird ask. Especially when it, you know, serve it's a very self-serving purpose, I would say. At least for me. I mean they might get a sketch or something out of it, but you can't really promise that it's gonna be good or worthwhile. Um, so because I don't have models, that's a roundabout way of getting to this point. This is what happens when I try to paint and talk. Um, because I don't have models, I, I'm going to start setting up still lifes. Um, I haven't, I like, I really like working from still lifes and I really never do it, which is fun and ironic. Um, and, but yeah, it's so easy to set up a still life and guess what? A still life will be there for you when you need it. So I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to try to spend a night a week painting from a still life. And then I'm going to try to spend um, a night or more than a night. I'm not really sure. What's going on here? What's wrong? I, I just basically need to expand my my regimen for practice, it's a little too narrow in its focus right now, and I don't really even know what I'm practicing. It's a, it is kind of a thing, I, I, I want to talk about that, I haven't really formulated exactly how I want to talk about it, but um, I am a big believer of deliber deliberate practice as a means of getting better at something. Um, but, you know, like what I've been doing lately, whatever I've been live streaming or whatever, is, is really not that far outside of my comfort zone. Um, I'm exploring new techniques and things like that, which is good. But I think I could be pushing myself further with a more uh, strict, regimented approach to what it is that I'm trying to tackle. I'm basically like an education. And I, I realized this uh, after kind of looking at some people that I follow on Instagram that are like at a, what do you call it? A, um, what is it called? Uh, an atelier uh, where, you know, they're doing all these master copies and plaster studies and, you know, just very rigorous, intense, deliberate, 
um, practice sessions with assignments and stuff that are specifically for improving certain aspects that is that are um, unique to the practice of like an atelier and I realized now while I don't want to be able to do photorealistic stuff uh, it's not of interest to me I do want some pretty more a little more solid foundational um, I guess what do you call it like you know just ability to render form understanding of color understanding of light all the others all the stuff that you know makes an illusion work basically when it comes to art uh, but I want to just take it far enough so that I have that under my tool belt and then I can use that to uh, make other work that's probably a little bit more loose and expressive um, yeah that's what I want to do so I need to step up my game because I got a long way to go very very long way to go I get some better highlights in this hair it's kind of getting pretty muddy right now Feeling better about all of this, I think. Uh, maybe under the neck needs a little darkening. So something that's, I always find very interesting about the way that shirt collars work. Uh, you know, you got your shadow, sure, um, but it's usually not like it's not this simple. There's like this awesome little divot that happens right with the esophagus and then some of the neck muscles that come up. And it's those moments, I think, in all cloth and things like that, that really help sell that the, the form of the cloth has dimension, that it's, you know, interacting with the form in interesting ways or in a real way. Uh, and you don't have to get too nitty gritty with it, but as long as you just like, you know, push the the basic essence of like what what's happening here, it um it just sells it in a good way. So it's always fun to kind of run across those moments uh, and to know how to take advantage of them so that so that this shirt actually looks like a dimensional piece of cloth that is not just sort of oddly wrapped around the neck. There's also just like some perspective stuff too that's worth noting. And you don't have to like draw all the lines, just as long as you put, you know, kind of a couple of the shadows of the, uh, the, the hem, I guess it's called the hem, uh, in the right right place. I don't even know if that's called the hem. Um, then you can really kind of sell the believability of this as a thing that this person's wearing. What's happening here? Let's see. I want to take this up a little brighter. So I need to like get this to dip down a little bit, a little bit more. I'm spending too much time with this part. I need to put some music on. This is all much lighter. Hmm. And 
angle's wrong. That's what's wrong here. Angle's very wrong. Come on, Mike, you should have seen that from the beginning. Amateur hour over here. Seriously. Better. A little sharp. Both the neck and this, like, the shadow here. Soften this up, and then I gotta sprinkle some magic. Save it. All right, let's go back to the way he was facing. Oh, let's see. I gotta go to the bathroom really quick. I'll put up a little thing. And I'm going to change the color of the type because I am an idiot. There's no way I'm leaving it on Myriad Pro. Little Gotham. There you go. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, cool. That's going to be fun in the archive. Uh, let's save it. All right. Well, I got most of the values kind of where I want them, I think. Uh, that eye is a little off. I need smaller brushes. 
in my actual painting practice. I don't ever really want to get this detailed though in a small painting. Problem with brushes is, I mean, you can take recommendations from friends and stuff, but um, I think you just eventually grow to like certain types of brushes and certain brands based on the based on the way you paint. And um, you know, I'm only just learning what what it is like, what the way I paint even is. So um, I'm a little loathe to invest too much. Like when I did my first and only painting series, I ended up discovering that I really like bristle brushes. Um, and they're um, like usually boar's hair, hog's hair. And they're very rough and um, they're a much thicker brush, I would say. And the benefit for me is that, well, they hold a lot of pigment a lot of paint, and they um, they have. It's hard to do like really smooth stuff with them. It encourages you to kind of use you know paint basically to make stuff look like it's been painted. If you see brush strokes, you um, you're encouraged to kind of make bold strokes. I mean, for lack of better words. Um, and it worked really well when I was working at about 20 inches by 20 inches. Uh, it works well on, you know, larger pieces, I would say, probably all the way down to uh, maybe 11 by 17 or something, based on the size of the brushes that I had. And after that, uh, it's, they're just not, the brushes I have really aren't good for smaller pieces, like this one, which was 8 by 10. So I've got some other sable brushes and stuff, and those are very smooth good for blending, but um, I don't really want to do a lot of blending. I, want, I, like, I like seeing brush strokes, so I got to figure out what brushes are going to work for me, because I just don't know right now. Um, I'm going to do anything else to this. I want to get the background in there. Yeah, screw it. Let's just try the background. Hmm. Maybe that's not it. Let me actually, let me let me get some of these values in the highlights up a little bit because they're going to contrast with the background and I want to make sure that they make sense. So let's just go ahead and kind of block in some of this. This is going to make everything pop a lot. This photo is definitely overexposed, if you couldn't tell. So I'm going to try not to go to pure white here. I'm not going to match all the values. I just want to make it a little bit more believable. Believable ish. Hmm. 
the hottest parts are definitely going to be here. That working? I'm squinting my eyes and trying to look at this just to see if the overall form feels good or right. Oh, I'm tired. Yeah, I think I need to just pull that cheek in. This is this is the biggest problem right here. I mean, I know it's there. I just don't want it. It just doesn't need to be so prominent because it just pushes the cheek out in a weird way. And like now that I don't have enough lightness in the beard, the beard looks like it's kind of stuck on in a dumb way. It's all these stupid little tricks. Oh man, I am really hungry. I know I just said that, but I am. Somebody get me a pizza. Don't get me a pizza. I gotta go out to dinner with friends. No pizza. It's a little, little rosy in the cheek there, I would say. No? Yeah, definitely. So we'll cool it off, neutralize this a little bit, and kind of bring it down some more. I think. Yeah, this is the one thing I don't like about digital painting. Um, it definitely gets soft, and I think I could change that with learning a little bit more about the medium. I'm not too terribly concerned about that right now. Okay, I'd say that's feeling okay. His nose is a little long. Um, this is the struggle I had yesterday, I swear. This is exactly the problem that I was having. Just couldn't quite get anything to work right up here. Gosh, hotkeys, come on. Hey, Greasy Nugs, what's up? Good to see you back. Hope you're having a good afternoon. Um, yeah, I don't have chat available to me right now. Oh, actually, you know what? Probably could if I wanted to. My computer is finally done installing 154 Windows updates.
Okay, so now let's try to figure out how we can make this background work a little bit better. Push that down. All right, I've got my values that are working okay. I wanted to try something a little bit like Hmm. How is that going to look? Just feel like. Do I have a brush that is. Hmm. It's not bad. That's. That's kind of what I want. Yeah, I want something like this. And let's adjust the opacity on that brush. Uh, transfer, minimum. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's see if we can make this, this work for us. Uh, this is just first pass. And we'll get all that integrated into the hair. That's one actually one awesome thing about oil paint over anything that's digital is that uh, getting your edges to blend in a nice way is something that's uh, pretty easy to do. It just kind of naturally happens. I think I should have stuck with that when I first did the real painting. Can we get some hue modulation happening on here? Um, smattering, no. Uh, color dynamics, there we go. Hue jittering. Give me a little bit of hue jittering. I might actually get in here and do something with like the, um, what do you call it? What's that thing called? The smudge tool. I might actually try out the smudge tool today. You'll notice I'm like not trying to go in a, like a single direction with all of these marks and it's just to give I don't want there to be too much weird flow and in, like line intention happening This might actually look interesting. I think if I even bring up the brightness on this side of the head a little bit, it's going to work better. Drawing rigatoni. No, that's not rigatoni. Macaroni. What are you doing down there? Get up here. Looks like Ben Affleck now. Yeah, the, I'm like in this, I think. Come on, Windows, just install your updates. So I'm going to try to blend that shoulder, I think, into this background. funny is this sort of randomish brush make 
fresh work that I'm doing right now is not dissimilar to what I what I do with real paint. Just to try to break up some of the monotony of all strokes in the same direction. Okay, so how do we get this to start feeling like it fits? No color dynamics. What am I using? What is this brush? This thing? Okay. So. It's a little cut out right now. I will get this sorted. Yeah, this might be the way to go when I take this <clears throat> when I try to finish up the actual oil painting. Just bring up that value on the background to something a little bit more neutral and more pink. It might be good that I actually made the background originally kind of a darker red because um, I'm going to crop this really quick. Um, because in making it red, I'm going to be able to get some of this bleed through that's actually happening here to happen in the real piece. And I do like the way that that kind of stuff looks. So that'll be a nice benefit. Plus that red will actually come through in the real painting. You'll see it optically to some degree. Okay. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Hockeys don't work. And uh, much creamier than the last one. <laughs> Uh, it is creamier. It is kind of creamy. I'm going to save this. Ooh, no. I need some of that color dynamics again. Give it a heater. Okay. This is where I think edging gets really important. Um, you got to know what, what needs to stick out uh, and have contrast with the background and what doesn't, um, like what's just going to feel right and what's not. And they need to vary that, I think. I don't know all the hard, fast rules. Don't, don't listen to me. Um, but there is something to be said about letting certain moments, like probably that lip and whatnot, um, maintain some of their their harshness, which is 
gives you a little bit of variety and etc. I do want this nose to be a little bit darker. He lost his bridge. There we are. Uh, yeah, that's messed up. I don't want that to be too hard. Oh, it's too soft. This is tough. This is really tough. Can't quite get it right. What the heck did I just do? Hmm. What's the best means of fixing this? I'll live with that. That's fine. That's fine. I do need to get this shape a little bit more defined, though. And then some of this, and some of this. I want to lighten that up, I think. Oh, thanks, Anna. She likes my ear. Now you got me looking at it and saying, what's wrong with the ear? Not that you said there was anything wrong with it. Now I'm just concerned about it. I haven't done touched the ear in a little while. Mm. some more red in there. I don't want to mess with this too much. Hmm. Fix this hair. I can neutralize this a lot. Adding some little highlights just to give it a little bit more dimension. Um, try to reshape it a little bit. Reshape and restate. We'll go in and add some more legitimate highlighting. It's a little too... I 
don't know that right now. I'm not totally into it. That was a weird noise. I just heard a thump from above my apartment, which is impossible because I'm on the top floor. That's not impossible. I guess somebody could be on the roof, but usually no one's working right now. Don't want to smooth this out too much. It's getting pretty smooth. Oh, so hungry. Wow, I've been waiting for this computer that I normally watch the comments on to restart with its updated Windows updates for the last two hours. It's one of the reasons why I'm not a Windows user anymore. Hmm, what do I want to do here? Should I write that highlight in there? Okay, let's try something. Um, I think I want to take down the flow to about 30%, and then even lower than that. This way it'll be almost like a dry brush. It's not quite doing what it's supposed to here. Virtual off control on. Oh, there's just too much texture on this brush. Sorry guys, I gotta figure out how to make this work the way that I want it to. Actually, I just want that brush. Hmm. This is why I don't use a lot of brushes. I need to make a brush like this that I want sometime. But do this, and then we'll do dual brush, oh wait, texture, scale, down, reduce the brightness a little bit, reduce the contrast. Yeah. Okay, sorry, that was. Weird. I'm just trying to get um, something that isn't going to be so blendy. I don't know if that's a good word. Uh, I needed something with texture that wouldn't just kind of smooth out everything. That would allow me to kind of get in here and chunk it up a little bit.
Try to figure out something with the back of the head here. I need to take this a little bit more orange. Hmm. I'm good with that, and then I will take some of that highlight. <clears throat> To make sure these eyebrows don't look like they're painted on. Give some variance to them. I think I want to bring up that highlight on the earlobe a little bit more. Hmm. Feel like. Hmm. There's a need to be like more light bluish hue in this area, in this sky. Same thing here. Come on, hotkeys, why don't you work? All right, now I want to address a little bit of what's weird about this nose. Basically, it just needs to be a little bit lighter. Not a lot of uh, value change that's happening here. And it's making this all kind of look samey. Samey? Is that a word? Samey? Looks samey. So I need to try to put in as much as I can without going too far with it. A little too light now, I feel like. Come 
on hotkeys. Hmm. Okay, so I'm not looking so much at the reference now. I'm just trying to figure out what I don't like about the painting. I think I had some issues with the shape of the hair. Oof, didn't mean to do that. I need to be a little bit more intentional with where uh, the edging hap is happening in here. It's a little, a little too, I don't know, just looks a little, a little bit too messy up there. Like, I don't like the back of this part of the head. See if it's a little bit more specular. Hmm. I think I need some color dynamics. A little bit of hue jitter up in here. Hue and brightness jitter, actually. Sorry guys, just taking a look at this and seeing um, little bits and pieces that are bugging me that kind of stand out like this thing. This thing being his mustache-ish area. It's a little too... I don't have enough shadow. And it's not transitioning over to this skin part very well. Okay, let's take our flow back up. Don't like this brush. Now I suddenly don't like this brush. Give me, uh, give me this, but small. Weird, my sensitivity feels strange. Maybe what's going on? This needs to be a little less saturated and a little darker. I need a little bit of highlight. Whoa.
I don't know what's going on with my brush right now. Something very strange is happening. Now I don't like the nose at all. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's try this. details. Hmm. I think I'm getting really nitpicky now.
suggest I shave off his mustache. I hate is that what's happening? It's like I want it to be more gray up here. A little bit more of a cast shadow to really sell that. No, 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 too fucking. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, aside from like the squatness of the head overall, um, I'm not dissatisfied with this. Mostly it was for just establishing what was wrong in the initial painting and coming up with a slightly um, slightly modified background color, or very majorly modified, but something I could kind of test an idea for before committing to the actual painting of it. <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't know. That looks like something. I feel like it's got decent color harmony. Um, I'd like a little bit more hue variance, I think, up in the upper portion here. Say that. <clears throat> Go ahead and group these, dupe them. Wow, yeah, that's a major, major difference. Well, I think the real painting will look better than if, as long as I get the values and the highlights up and. Uh, get that background <clears throat> to be a lighter pink. And figure out some of these general shapes of the face, but I think overall this is gonna work out. I have a plan of attack for tomorrow night at least, so that's a good thing. Um, I wanna do one last thing, and that is fix this hairline a little bit. It's a little too sharp.
amazingly sharp hairlines. It's a little bit better. Okay. 524. Wow, that was almost two hours. Crazy. All right, I'm going to stop. Uh, I think I accomplished something. So that was fun. Thanks to the, for everybody that came and watched, uh, even though it wasn't announced. I do appreciate you watching this, and even though it was completely aimless for the most part. Um, I'm hoping just to sometimes use these sessions to try things out and experiment and just improve upon some other work that I might be working on at the time. So, yep, uh, I'm going to go ahead and upload this to Sketchy as is, and then I'll finish painting the actual piece sometime in the near future, and I'll probably put that up if it turns out okay somewhere. Yeah, now I'm just breaking stuff. Okay. I'm done. F this. Have a good uh, rest of your weekend, people, and I will talk to you later.